Dr. Pete's Gout Protocol, and we start right now. Hi, I am Dr. Pete. I have a PhD in biochemistry. I am a certified health coach. I put my prediabetes in reversal and my gout is in remission on a ketogenic diet. First, let's remember the statistics. About 4% of the US population suffers from gout. However, there are 44 million people here in the US that are hyperuricemic. That means they're walking around with high uric acid. The way that we gauge the high uric acid is a value that is at or above seven mg per deciliter. The mean value of uric acid in the gout suffering population is 8.3 mg per deciliter. A significant percentage of those individuals will have uric acid between eight and six mg per deciliter. And a full 14% will have uric acid values, gout suffers, uric acid values under six mg per deciliter. When individuals with hyperuricemia but no gout symptoms have their joints aspirated, monosodium urate crystals can be found. So what this data means is that uric acid alone in the joint in the form of a crystal is not sufficient for a gout flare. This suggests that the current hypothesis posited by the medical establishment is incorrect. This is the idea that we have a sodium urate crystal in the joint. This somehow irritates the joint and we have an inflammatory response that causes the gout flare. Don't get me wrong, I am not arguing that a gout flare does not require crystallized sodium urate. In fact, that it, it does. But what I'm arguing is that we need something besides the crystal to generate the inflammation and then to get a gout flare. Therefore, I have proposed the following hypothesis that has its origins in the fructose uric acid model of obesity, type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease by Dr. Richard Johnson. This hypothesis easily explains the data in the statistics and is represented by the following parts. First, we have a sudden acute rise in uric acid at the intracellular level inside the cell. Secondly, and at minimum, we have the activation of an inflammatory cascade intracellularly that activates the transcription factor junk one and also a cytokine called IL-1 beta. Third, we have activation of the NLRP3 inflammasome and potentially other inflammasomes on uric acid crystals which cause the gout flare. All three of these aspects can happen on site in the joint. Lastly, I'd like to make two clarifications. First, there is data that suggests that along with sodium urate crystals or even soluble uric acid, that there must be effector molecules. One such indication in the literature is the presence of free fatty acids that are produced during the hyperglycemic events in type 2 diabetes and obesity as an example. And secondly, as I just mentioned, besides crystalline uric acid or sodium urate, there is evidence that soluble uric acid within the cell has a similar effect in terms of this cascade. So to summarize what is going on, in the joint we have two classes of biological cells that are important. We have the chondrocyte, which is responsible for 
providing nourishment and various structural proteins and things like that to the cartilage. We also have the innate immune system there in the form of residential cells, macrophages, neutrophils, and monocytes. Both sets of cells respond to the standard American diet and conditions of insulin resistance in similar ways. So that we can have the dynamic, the sudden and acute rise in uric acid in the intracellular environment in either of the two classes of cells. We have activation of the inflammatory cascade with also junk one and IL-1 beta. And lastly, we can have the formation of the NLR P3 inflammasome. So all these processes are happening on site in the joint in question. So why do we care? I mean, this sounds so complex to, to not only to myself, but to everyone. And the reason why this matters is, is that if we want to solve the problem of gout, then we need to be proposing solutions that actually go to the root cause of the disease. And that's what this hypothesis does. So now, next, let's turn to the substances that initiate this sudden acute rise in uric acid at the intracellular level. By far, the ingestion of alcohol and fructose are at the heart of the gout condition and cause a sudden and acute rise in uric acid at the intracellular level. I've published a series of videos in this area and you will find them linked right here. The ingestion of protein is of less concern unless you are ingesting large quantities of things like anchovies and sardines and you're doing this every single day. Historically, the amounts of protein ingested by humans has remained relatively constant. Yes, there have been rises and there have been decreases, but the ingestion of protein does not strongly correlate like that of alcohol and fructose with the rise in gout. So knowing what we know, what does a gout protocol look like? First and foremost, we need to eliminate alcohol and the fructose and also eliminate hyperglycemic events because hyperglycemia can influence the amount of endogenous fructose that's produced within the cell. Secondly, we want an eating plan that is going to reduce systemic inflammation, therefore lowering the production of junk one and IL-1 beta. And third, by lowering the systemic inflammation and bringing junk one down along with IL-1 beta, we will also block the formation of the NLR P3 inflammasome and other inflammasomes that are possible. In the ketogenic diet, we end up producing the small fat molecule, which is called beta-hydroxybutyrate. And beta-hydroxybutyrate has been shown to inhibit directly the formation of the NLRP3 inflammasome. I recommend a ketogenic eating plan, which will be 5% carbohydrate, 20% protein, and 75% fats. Monitor your uric acid using a handheld UA Sure meter. If you are monitoring your uric acid, you will be able to answer questions for yourself. Like for example, how much protein am I eating? And is it causing a very large uh, increase in my uric acid? You can answer that question by simply measuring your uric acid before and after meals with different amounts of protein to see the effects of these different types of food substances. After keto adaption, which usually takes two to three months on the ketogenic diet with no cheating, at that point you will evaluate your fasting uric acid and if you have high fasting uric acid, you may want to consider talking to your doctor about 
a uric acid lowering drug. I know that this remission plan works. I've used it myself and I, I have talked to enough people that are doing it to know that it works. However, your gout flares can return if you are cheating. In other words, when you go on to the ketogenic diet, you really have to do it, right? If you start and you have a day where you eat some sugar or you, you drink some alcohol or there's a combination of those two things, the likelihood that you're going to have a sudden onset flare in, in the favored joint, whichever it is for you, is highly likely. One saving grace is that if you have a flare after keto adaption, most likely the flare will be mild, perhaps because of the production of beta-hydroxybutyrate. Lastly, if down the road you choose to go on allopurinol to lower your fasting uric acid, it is common to have gout flares as your body adjusts to this drug. And with that, I'd like to thank you for watching my presentation. And if this is the first time that you've joined us, please hit the subscribe button and the bell next to it. And I'll see you soon next time we publish a video.